the transformation. So I'm going to transform both V and V prime, and I'm going to transform them like this. I'm going to take an element of the group, and I'm going to act on V to give me T tilde V, um, and I'm going to act on V prime to give me T tilde V prime. And now I'm going to take the inner product of T tilde V with T tilde V prime using this inner product. And if I can show that the inner product hasn't changed, so I get the same thing as I would have gotten if I took the inner product of V with V prime, then I've got a unitary rep. The inner product was preserved. So let's see how we're going to do that. Um, so we want T tilde V, G, T tilde V prime. So what is this equal to? Well, this is... Um, Okay, so sorry, I, I, I somehow changed notation somewhere there. So that wasn't good. So that's a bit better. Um, so this will be equal to 1 over G, a sum on T as an element of G. Now we want T on T tilde V, and we want T on T tilde V prime. Okay, but this I can write as 1 over G sum on T as an element of G. Um, v, um, gamma dagger, T, T tilde, gamma of T, T tilde on V prime. And now I'm going to again introduce a new integration variable. I'm going to call T bar is equal to T, T tilde. Then what does this sum become? It becomes 1 over G sum on T bar is an element of G. V gamma dagger of T bar, gamma of T bar, V prime. And what am I using? I'm again using the fact that the sum is invariant under that change of variables, that exact same change of variables. That comes up everywhere in representation theory. And this is equal to um, 1 over G sum over T bar element of G, um, T bar V, T bar V prime. But that's the inner product that we would have gotten if we had just taken the inner product here of V with V prime. Okay? This is exactly the same as that. That there is exactly the same as that. That means that the inner product is invariant, so I've got a unitary representation. Any questions on that? Okay, is everyone happy with that result? Do not feel shy to ask questions. Rocco, are you happy with that? Well, you know what? I mean... You, you might have been unhappy what I was doing here if I was manipulating the vectors. But certainly here I'm talking about a group element. So I'm now summing. This is a group element. And I know that when I make the change in the sum here, certainly that's something you can think about. So that, that's why I put that in. Okay? Um, okay, so that means certainly this inner product is unitary. So if I use this inner product to calculate matrix elements... I would land up with a bunch of unitary matrices. And what did I use again to prove this? Okay, so, so I, I know I keep stressing this point, but it's because it's important. I used the invariance of the sum under that change of variables. If your Lie group is invariant under that change of variables, every representation of your Lie group will also be equivalent to an, a, a, a unitary representation. Okay? So that's what's driving it. Okay, and the reason why... I wanted to, to show that every rep is equivalent to a unitary rep is because I now want to write down my fundamental orthogonality relations for a unitary rep, and I'm not losing any generality when I do that. So that's why we did that exercise. Um, so let's now put that down. Um, now... <coughs> 
if I'm in a unitary rep, the inverse of a matrix is equal to the complex conjugate transpose, right? So the way that I rewrite this condition, I say I've got a sum T as an element of G. So gamma A stays exactly the same. Now, instead of using an inverse there, I will complex conjugate and take the transpose. And that will be equal to delta AB, delta RS, delta IJ, G over DA. And this is the form that we're going to use it in. And as far as the integral goes, so I'm just going to change this one as it is. So this is the form you'll often see it written in. This is actually under the assumption of a unitary representation. And in fact, we now have enough to prove that the list of irreducible representations only has a finite number of entries. So let's prove that now. A finite group, a group of finite order, will only have a finite number of inequivalent, irreducible representations. So let's write that down. Um, Okay, so we're going to define a vector. And the vector looks like this. It's got three labels, I, R, and A. And these are the elements of it. Gamma A of T1, I, R. Gamma A of T2, I, R. And we keep going till we get to gamma A of T G I R. How many elements are there in this matrix? Uh, sorry. How many entries are there in this vector? G, the order of the group, right? So this is a G dimensional vector. Everyone happy with that? How many of these vectors are there? Well, how many different values can A take? R. Okay? So, so A can range from 1 to R. And how many values can I and R take? Well, that's the number of matrix elements inside the matrix, right? So I and R can take a total of DA squared values, where DA is the dimension of the representation. Let's go through that counting again. A labels the irreducible representation that you're looking at. For a specific irreducible representation, you can look at any matrix element when you specify I and R. So if representation A has got dimension DA, the number of matrix elements that we have is dA squared. I can take any value from 1 to dA, and R can take any value from 1 to dA. So if I want to work out the total number of vectors, I have to sum from A is equal to 1 to R of dA squared. Okay? So this is equal to the number of vectors. dA is equal to the dimension of representation A, and it's a g-dimensional vector. Sorry, R? I and R would label a specific matrix element inside this matrix rep. So to count the values that I and R can take on, I must count the number of matrix elements, right? 
So I can be 1, 2, up to dA. R can be 1, 2, up to dA. So the total number of values that I and R can take on is dA squared. You happy with that, Noreen? Okay, well, let's take a look. When you want to specify a vector, okay, how many choices do you have? You have to specify A. Once you've specified a particular representation, you have to specify I and R. The number of values that I and R can take on will depend on A, right? Because different reps have got different dimensions. So I need to calculate the number of values I and R can take on for each A, and then I need to sum over A. Right? Okay, let's try to count these vectors. You tell me how to count them. Maybe I'm counting them. R is equal to the number of irreducible representations. Okay, I need to sum over all values of A. Oh, okay. That's quite true. So we'll do this. Okay, is that what was worrying you? Good point. You happy now? Good. Any other questions? Okay, good. Now then, let's check some property of these vectors. So this is interesting. Let's calculate... Um, <coughs> J, S, B onto I, R, A. Let's calculate what that inner product is. What is that inner product? Well, I need to take the ket vector onto the bra vector and sum. So I'm going to be summing over all t's. There's an element of G. Now let's put in the ket vector. So we will have gamma B complex conjugate Js, Js of T, gamma A of T, I, R. Everyone happy? That's the inner product of these vectors, right? So that's the element of the ket, that's the element of the bra, and then I need to sum over the vector index, which in this case is the same as the index labeling group elements. What is this equal to? This is just G over DA, delta IJ, delta RS, delta AB. Okay? Any questions on that? So these vectors are orthogonal. If I have got 10 dimensional vectors, What's the biggest set of orthogonal vectors that I could have? How many at most could I choose to be orthogonal if they're 10-dimensional? 10 of them, right? If my vectors are two-dimensional, how many vectors, two-dimensional vectors can I have that are orthogonal at most? Two. If my vectors are g-dimensional, how many vectors could I have in total that are orthogonal? G. So the sum from A is equal to 1 to R of dA squared has to be less than or equal to G. Okay? Now, dA has to be at least one. It's a positive number. So at most, I can only have a finite number of terms appearing on this side of the equation, and that means that R has to be finite. So for every finite group, we must have a finite number of irreducible representations. Okay? There's an analog of this for compact Lie groups, which I think is called, it's the Peter theorem or it's the peter Weil theorem. And it just says that the number of irreps is countable. Okay? Um, are there any questions on that? Okay, so, so I hope you can see we, we've reached one of our goals now. We've been able to show that on our list of irreducible representations, we'll only have a finite number of entries. Okay? So we've managed to say something about the number of irreducible representations. Okay, if there's no more questions, this is a good place to stop for tea. <laughs>